All right, we are live. Just give me one second to make sure the audio is coming through, and then we will get started. Okay, test. Okay, test. I think we're good. All right, hey everyone, Ryan from U Bike Escape. Another live stream for you today. We are unboxing the Magicycle Cruiser Pro. I last reviewed their Cruiser last year, maybe fall. I don't remember exactly when. That was their first model. Actually, I think it was September, maybe October. And they really launched into the e-bike space with some uh, e-bike prices that were almost hard to believe. And so... They've kind of expanded from that offering other models. And if you are looking to purchase any of the Magicycle bikes, I'd really appreciate it if you use the link down in the description. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel. So thanks in advance. Of course, our other resources will be down in the description as well. Electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page. So this bike is currently priced at $2,089. And then I believe you can get a discount code right on their website for $200 off. So making it under $2,000 and it seems increasingly we're seeing a lot of more fat tire e-bikes at that price point. And so it's kind of been interesting to review some of them and really the popularity of some of these bikes that are similar to this. And I also believe I kind of pulled uh, the YouTube audience to see if I should review this. And our other video was pretty popular. So thought I would see what else Magicycle has to offer. So we'll get started with the unboxing. And as always, I am not a bike mechanic. This isn't a tutorial. The reason I do these videos is simply to answer any questions or chat with you. We get a lot of YouTube comments and it's very difficult to respond to everyone, even though I'd really like to. And so this is an opportunity for people to ask questions and you'll notice I'm going to cut the box, but I don't necessarily recommend you do this just in the off chance that you have to return whatever electric bike that you're buying. Though with just me, it makes it a lot easier to unbox and you can kind of see uh, how it's packaged as well. Actually, pretty impressive packaging, little damage, very little damage. I mean, just some on the outside of the box. No real big punctures. And I'll kind of talk a little bit once I get this open. Let's see here. There we go. So that is the way this bike comes packaged. And also just a note, um, let's see, on, well, I wanted to share on this bike They've kind of, I think they've been through a lot more now that they've released some e-bikes. And you can see they have foam here on top of the rear rack, but then they also have some additional plastic, which is zip tied to the rear rack here. And that's obviously for keeping the, the rear rack uh, nice and uh, protected. So they definitely thought through some of the packaging here, uh, in my opinion. Okay, let's see. So it looks like maybe they are uh, actually putting the battery in a separate box, which I think is really interesting. Uh, and again, feel free to ask any questions in the comment section here. Debating on this or the KBO or Juiced Hyperscorbian for Uber Eats delivery. Glad you're reviewing this one. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are all pretty good options. I I know the cargo capacity on this bike is 350 pounds. And I think the nice thing about a cargo bike like the KBO is just that giant rear rack. And I believe that the Juiced Hyper Scorpion also has some cargo capability in the, the back there. Um, so those are all good options or this has a nice large rear rack. I guess I've, I don't have experience myself as a delivery person, so I don't can't speak to the what you need. Maybe the rack like this size is actually a fine size. All right, so here's the battery. So it's not integrated into the frame, but it kind of looks like it is. And I'll show you the frame here, but this is the step through. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a yep 52 volt battery, 20 amp hours of capacity. And so that's, I think, 
going to be one of the selling points of this electric bike. Set that off to the side here. Uh, oh yeah, the Hyper Scorpion Express. Yes, that's the one that they made specifically for deliveries. Something that's not on the website, is it UL2849 certified? Uh, I am not sure. I don't even really know what that certification is. Maybe I should. Let me know if uh, someone wants to search that or if you want to let me know, uh, Sherman. Does KBL go, mo go more than 20 miles per hour? No. Uh, that's good that the battery is separate. Yeah, I mean, I think they're usually pretty well protected uh, in the box when they're attached to the frame, but they must be doing that for some reason. I'm going to get out my side snips here. Get this. This is a fat tire bike, of course. And so we have 20 by 4 inch tires. Just such a popular uh, type of electric bike. The fat tires are just still surprises me a little bit. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I just think a lot of people like them. Maybe one more. Yeah, and I just, uh, our most recent video is actually the, the KBL Ranger. Comparison to the Rad Wagon. Finished that review also recently. All right, so we have a fender, the plastic fenders. They're very similar on a lot of electric bikes. Just wanna make sure this doesn't tip over on me. The protector for the rotor. There we go. Sometimes that can be a bit challenging to remove. Um, let's see. Oh, that's Underwriter Laboratories for Safety. Yeah, I, I am not aware of, um, of that or if if this bike is certified for that. I'll have to maybe do some more uh, research on that. All right, we got a Magicycle box here. So if I'm not mistaken, Magicycle, I believe, is uh, at least Chinese-based, I think, and that's why their prices are kind of so good. Their uh, tagline, ride free, ride fun. See what they give you in this box here. <laughs> Got the uh, Magicycle hat, in case you want to represent the brand. We've got the light. This is, I believe, a different light than I saw. Maybe not actually. This is very similar to the Rad Power Bikes light with the ring around the side. And I actually think it's fairly decent as far as integrated lights go. Um, I don't know what this is. Well, you're not gonna believe what's inside. Magic coins is what they're promoting with this. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, and the cruiser manual, always recommend reading that. <laughs> this is kind of funny. They give you gloves, I guess. So you don't get your hands dirty while assembling. Interesting. I have not had that before. Magicycle branded tools. Assume they're the kind of cheaper tools that we see on many electric bikes. We get the job done. Pedals, of course. These are the Welgo pedals that come on so many electric bikes. All right, thanks, Patrick. Appreciate that. If you uh, buy this that bike. I do have the link, uh, a link for the Hyper Scorpion Express. If you, uh, if you go into our other videos, any of the other videos, I have to update this one. But if you go into the any other video of ours, there's a link where it says like top e-bike brands in the description of the video, and I have a bunch of brands listed. And if you just click that link over to Juice, uh, that'll help me out. So and same with the KBO. So I I really appreciate the support. Makes videos. Possible for sure helps uh, having some help with writing and editing our videos and allows us to do a little bit more. Three amp charger, slightly faster than a two amp charger. 
August 15th. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for you. I actually would love to review that bike from Juiced. We're going to try to get a Rip Current S from them to review. So we'll see if we can make that happen. Actually, it should be. Lots of zip ties to cut here. See, we got 20 or so people. Always uh, like hearing from people, either where you're from, what bikes you're considering. We opted for the, I believe it's called Midnight Blue. I believe it's also offered in white. And I always like showing off the step throughs, so that's what we went with this time around. Let's see here. Uh, the friend, the friend e-bike. No, I am uh I believe someone else has mentioned that. I have that's not on our radar at the moment. The friend brand. We've got a few interesting uh, reviews, hopefully in the works, some maybe new brands that we're hoping to uh, work with. So hopefully I can make those happen. I don't really like to share them until it actually happens because you never know. And of course, even as customers, uh, when customers see delays in their bikes, it's the same thing for reviewers. So if a company tells me they want me to review a bike in August, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen in August. Again, we have the uh, controller located underneath the frame. For off-roading, that's not really ideal if you're really going over some kind of crazy terrain. Um, but uh, Magicycle did send me with the, cru the original Cruiser a kind of Kydex cover. I actually didn't put it on, but uh, I hope they still offer that for this uh, bike. I'll, I'll try to include that in my review. Again, if you're just, you know, riding off-road and, you know, you're not, there's no chance of you hitting anything, it'll be fine. But just an exposed controller uh, right there. Let's see. They have this whole, the whole fork, I don't know if it's uh, easy or difficult to see in the video, but it's kind of, they put a whole another section of cardboard around the front. Here. And foam. It's hard to imagine anyone receiving a damaged Magicycle bike the way they're packaging these. And we'll have to put on the handlebars. All right, let's see what we're working on here. I do like the bikes that come with the, uh, kind of have the back tire wedged in a little bit of a stand with the car back. Helps a little bit with assembly. All right, so make sure the brake, okay, brake is on the correct side. But we do need to rotate the stem here. They have that turned around for packaging. So definitely have to do some adjustments there even after I get the handlebars on. But I think what I might do is put the handlebars on just to get them out of the way a little bit here. And 
In a little bit, I will check the comment section. Just want to get started on this here and then we have four bolts on the front of the bike for some accessories. I'm not actually, I'm sure they have a front rack. This is about normal as far as assembly goes on e-bikes. Take the face plate off, throw on the handlebars, throw on the front tire, usually a front light, fender, pedals, and then you're good to go. And while you can use the, the tools that come with the bike, I'm using my ratchet wrench, which seems to make things a little bit faster. Looks like we have a lockout on the front suspension. And one of the biggest differences besides the battery on this bike uh, compared to the Cruiser, the original Cruiser, is that this has hydraulic brakes. And I believe I saw that they're Tektro, which is a brand I'm very familiar with. And I've used their Tektro brakes and they perform quite well. So I guess this is why they give you uh, the white gloves. My hands are a little bit uh, creasy here. Uh, I think I might have to take off. The... All right, flip these around. Sometimes the display here can get in the way just wondering if I'm going to be able to get in here easily without let's see. these center mounted displays. I like when companies leave it loose because then I can actually move it out of the way. Maybe if I go all the way forward with it. Yeah. This is probably my best bet. So let me just get this started and I'll make sure there's no other comments here. Yeah, they are Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. That's great. And if you haven't seen, we uh, have done some videos on some, some assembly videos with the professional bike mechanic. And even if you're not looking at those specific bikes, uh, that can kind of help you if you're on the fence of whether you want to assemble the bike yourself or not. Then I feel like I've been receiving a lot of comments recently of people appreciating seeing uh, someone who is a... Uh, bike mechanic put together a bike so they really understand a little bit more of what goes into it. It's not necessarily just putting some bolts in. It's if you want it, you know, nice and tuned and uh, functioning really nicely, uh, you know, that's where a professional kind of comes into play and can help a lot. All right. So this is at least started. Oh. Sure, there's, maybe I can see if I can get the kickstand. Kickstand will help. All right, here we go. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, apologies. I'm very. Uh, this bike accessory shop is amazing compared to other companies. They have everything, even flat tire repair kits. Oh, good to know, Patrick. It's something I hadn't investigated. What do you do with all these bikes? Uh, keep a lot of them, at least for the time being. We might use them in future videos. Otherwise, we do sell them locally uh, here at a discount. Basically, brand new bikes that have you know, 20 to 30 miles on them, sometimes a little bit more, just depending. Um, skid plate, plate you can get. Thanks, Patrick. 
Love my rad mini. Thanks for your great vlog. Thanks, Rob, for joining us on a Sunday night. Uh, have you tested out other 52 volt e bikes? Oh, gosh. Um, I want to say, I think the original Cruiser was a 52 volt system, I believe. I'm trying to think what other ones we would have maybe reviewed as well. Um, let's see. I think the Hemingway is still. Yeah, so the old cruiser is 52 volt. And I think the old Hemiways were still 48 volts, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just verify. It's hard to keep some of these bikes straight unless I've, you know, yeah, 48 volts on the, the Hemiways. So yeah, that the maybe was only the cruiser pro. I'd have to go back and look. Um, let's see. How many watts is the motor? Um, I believe this is 750 watts and probably peaks uh, much higher than that. Um, I mean, I remember the first cruiser that I reviewed. It was crazy fast, um, you know, well into the 20s. And so I'm sure they're, yeah, they're advertising this as a 750 watt motor, but it probably peaks much higher than that. I don't know what they're using for a, a controller. Let's see. They list the amps, not that I could find easily just by uh, searching, but it's possible they have it here. I'm just not sure. Um, yeah, someone, Patrick says 28 miles per hour ish. Yeah, I'll test it out for sure. Price on this bag, $20.89 and then minus $200 if you use their discount. Oh, Patrick, you are on top of things. <laughs> All right, throttle only at 20 miles per hour is about 40 miles. Yeah, I agree with that. Class three, three days ago is 1889, moves a lot. Similar range with Rad. How sturdy would you say as a frame in terms of flex on a bike and the comfort level of the Magic Cycle? So I personally have not experienced frame flex, but you have to keep in mind I'm also a lighter rider, 145-ish pounds. Um, the nice thing is if you are looking at other step-through bikes, I mean, this is kind of a mid-step really because it still has a top bar. I would imagine it's going to be plenty sturdy. Um, and yeah, Patrick's answering all my questions, making my job easy here. <laughs> um, yeah, so 15 amps apparently on the old controller. So uh, love the handlebars. Yeah, they, they raise up a little bit, but you could put uh, certainly put an adjustable stem on here if you wanted to. It's probably going to be a little bit more aggressive, but it's not, they're not flat handlebars. And I'm just going to, you don't really know where you want the handlebars until you actually kind of sit on the bike. It's like a fairly wide saddle on here. And I am going to try to break out the old cruiser uh, and kind of put it next to this bike when I do the review. Granted, that is a high step model. So uh, I just, you know, that's a, another good example of why we keep some of the bikes. If they're a little bit more popular, we might want them in the future. And so uh, what I'll probably do is review the uh, this bike and then sell the, the older non-pro model. Maybe keep this one around. We'll have to see. Uh, oh, this is, a, this is interesting. It's actually a warranty, but this is not for the, this is for the Zoom, I guess. Uh, front fork would be my guess. It's, it's unbranded, um, but that's really interesting. They tell you how you can go to uh, register the front fork. And that is a, a brand I'm familiar with. That's kind of interesting. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's get on the front um, tire here. Unfortunately, I'm going to be a little bit out of frame. I can try to slide this bike back slightly. Looks like the quick release is actually inside the uh, kind of where it came shipped here. This is always where it's nice to have someone help you. And uh, one thing to note is there is a spacer 
in the hydraulic brake caliper and that prevents you from causing issues if you happen to hit the brake. Just remember when you take that out, you want to avoid the front brake at least until that front wheel is in place. All right. So now we can actually I'll do this side. Even a little cap on the other side help protect the where the skewer goes in. I can get it off. Let's see. I definitely don't want this bike getting damaged, that's for sure. And sometimes the best way to pop these off is actually going on the other side, it's hitting the skewer like I just did. Okay, uh, put this on here. We've got uh, Tektro branded rotors as well, 180 millimeters. Should be able to lift this straight up and put the tire on. This is actually really nice. A good example of, of course, I talked about the spacer and then uh, didn't take it out. But what I was about to say was there's that uh, spacer. So one of the nice things about the battery not being in there is the bike is so much lighter. And so it's actually not too hard to get this bike on the, the front wheel here. So I appreciate that. All right, get this all tightened up. Just getting the quick release on. Okay, cool. Not too bad. Just taking out some of the or taking off some of the other plastic. Looks like we have a Shimano Altus derailleur. You know, it seems like. No matter the price point, most times that is the that is the derailleur of choice for many of these companies. It functions just fine, but it's definitely on the entry level as far as Shimano components go. All right. And they do include these uh, straps, which is kind of a nice addition. And uh, Cool, let's see, let's uh, just gonna throw on the pedals here since I'm here. All right, oh man, it's hard to keep up with all this. Any idea how long the handlebars are? No, sorry, they very standard size. Adjustable is either 29.9. Interesting, you can buy these bikes half the cost if you order yourself, takes two months for delivery. Be smart with your money. I think one of the problem, I mean, certainly you can do that order from AliExpress or whatever. Uh, only downside is probably you don't actually have much of a warranty. Um, so. Oh, gosh. What is the most comfortable step through bike you have tested? Oh, uh, gosh. I really like the Rad City 5 Plus. Anything with swept back handlebars and an adjustable stem. Um, the ride one up 700 series is really great. Um, what else? I mean, even some of the like folding step throughs, like the, the rad expand five with the BMX handlebars are really nice. Um, yeah, those are the kind of the bikes that I'd, uh, lean towards. I'm trying to think what other step through bikes, uh, we've reviewed. Um, but yeah. Look for swept back handlebars, adjustable stem. Oh, the U-Free, uh, that's a newer one that I've reviewed. I really like that bike, super comfortable as well. Um, I don't know if I trust AliExpress, yeah. 12,000 watt, wow, okay. <laughs> Rad free shipping still, yes. 
delivery, Magicycles free shipping. Yes, definitely. Uh, you can order the same bike delivered a thousand dollars ish. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about, uh, ordering direct from, uh, AliExpress, which is kind of a direct from, uh, China. I'm not saying you won't get a working e-bike, but, um, you know, in some cases you might not know exactly what you're going to get. And I mean, you can say the same about new e-bike brands too. So uh, whatever you want to do, I, I mean, that's the reason we kind of, some, some of the brands that we recommend the most are probably not surprisingly the, the more reputable brands that have been around for some time and that we hear for the most part that they have good customer support. Got the pedals on and I'm going to see if we give a 15 mil wrench here. Remember that left pedal is going to be reverse threaded. Okay. Right pedal is normal threads. Okay, I think uh, maybe what I'll do, let's try to jack the bike up a little bit. Still have to tighten the handlebars and get the fender on and that light. Maybe I'll do that next. These uh, fenders and lights pretty much go on the same way on a lot of electric bikes here. There we go. Looks like there's going to be plenty of clearance, so it probably doesn't matter how low I put the fender. I'm always impressed how many people uh, join. <laughs> to watch me assemble a bike. So uh, I appreciate everyone watching our videos and gosh, I watched one of our older videos the other day and it was, uh, I know a lot of people on YouTube say they go back and watch their videos and they're pretty cringeworthy. And I mean, certainly we can continue to improve, but man, it's, uh, gotten a lot better even since I started so maybe not the live streams I know some people find these videos very boring but that kind of defeats that's really not the purpose I have to assemble them anyway so I might as well do it with some company that's tight enough. There's that front light. And we'll go through on these fenders quick. And then I'll put the battery on and gosh, we're going to be close to done minus the handlebars. Again, I know there's a lot of discussion about uh, the AliExpress e-bikes, but if you have any other questions, don't be afraid to ask your comments.
All right, one more. Another thing I thought I would uh, at least promote if you're not aware and want more content, we do have a monthly uh, newsletter that we send out and kind of share a little bit more perspective of what's going on behind the scenes and also uh, give some insight into some of the best deals that we think are going on. And also share some of our content in case you happen to miss it. We do a lot of written reviews as well. So if you want to join that, you can head on over to ebikeescape.com and should be a pop-up after 30 seconds or so. We should probably get a sign up, uh, an address like ebikeescape.com slash sign up or something as well. Landing page. Maybe I'll have to work on that. All right, got a Magicycle branded uh, chain stay guard here. Double uh, chain ring on the front chain ring. Double walled at least. And uh, I think we can get the, the battery in. Maybe I'll show you that step over. So I wouldn't say it's super low. I'm six feet tall here. And uh, let's see, how do we want the handlebars? Probably right about there. I do like those hydraulic disc brakes. So this display is gonna have to come a little bit further down. Well, maybe right there. Actually, it is a fairly upright riding position, I would say. I think that the um, certainly the frame design is helping with that for sure. So I will tighten this up quick and I'll check again the uh, Comments. Actually, what I should be using is the uh, little extension. Make my life a little bit easier here. I've used this tool so many times, it just always comes in. Looks like we got a bell up here. We have the uh, thumb shifter, the Shimano thumb shifter that we see on many electric bikes. Very, again, a very entry level component, nothing wrong with it. Just make sure I don't have this one cross threaded here. And I will try to turn on the bike in a minute here. Got controls on the left side. Looks like we'll have to turn those upwards a little bit. And this is probably one thing where you really do want to torque it to spec. Almost done.
Okay. Good enough for now. All right, let's see if we can get that battery on. Oh, geez. Let's see. Uh, is it duals kickstand like the KBO? No. I'd call them a mid-step through. Totally agree, Rob. I like these live streams make it easier to put together. Yes, although I'm not a bike mechanic. But, yes, you can get an idea of the process. What bike is most comfortable, the Rad Rover or the Magicycle? Gosh, I mean, comfort-wise, it's kind of tricky because you can make – any of these bikes comfortable, right? If you don't like the handlebars, you can add a adjustable stem. You can add handlebars that are taller. You can add it a suspension seat post. You can put on a new seat. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Uh, so I would say both bikes are probably going to be pretty similar. Can you even buy an extension for the handlebar that allows more add-ons? Yes. Like a Bluetooth speaker, phone mount. Yes. Totally agree. Uh, the handlebars don't look near as tall as the original cruiser. All right, I'll have to take a look at that when we uh, when I put it side by side. That bike have a walk assist mode. Not sure. I'll have to check into that. To be honest, it's not the walk assist mode is not something that I actually really talk about in a lot of the videos, though a lot of the bikes have it. Uh, it's just not something that I personally. Um, uh, you know, find useful. I, I know some people do. Uh, so maybe I'll try to make sure I call that out. I like to see your wife on the videos because it gives us a better perspective on the different sizes of bikes. I totally agree, Charlie. Sometimes it's just hard convincing her. And that, to be honest, it's also pretty difficult for us to, uh, to get uh, dedicated time without the kiddos. And so if you see her on a video, it's actually a, a rare occurrence, at least as of uh, more recently. Uh, we got her on the KBO though, and uh, maybe I'll try to get her on this bike. We'll we'll see. I'll maybe I'll have to let her know that. But I totally agree. I mean, when you're buying a bike online, uh, having knowing size wise, at least you know the website only tells you so much. Uh, and a lot of companies will say, yeah, it works for people four foot ten to six foot four. It's like, well, that's that's you know ninety percent of people. I would I would guess. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn this on. There we go. Got a nice Magicycle uh, color LCD display. And uh, yeah, I've seen this display before. I'm not sure. It might have been on the Magicycle. Um, yeah, it, it, this is definitely the same one or very similar because you can customize it and uh, it's super simple to use. I can see, yeah, it has a walk assist mode. I can guarantee that. I just held the pedal assist down button. Um, so cheap little bell here and, uh, yeah, battery is fully charged, which is interesting. Um, we do have a brake light. That's nice. And of course the front light, Oh, got to plug in the front light, but then if you have the lights on, it goes a little bit brighter. Oh, well, maybe go plug that front light in. I think we are nearing the end, so I will let you guys uh, let me know if you have any other comments. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out. We have I uh, have one more unboxing to do in the short term. We have a Rad Runner uh, Plus to do a full review on. Um, this seat actually feels pretty decent. I'll have to take a closer look at that. Um, and then we have a Hemiway Big Dog coming. So that review is going to be uh, in the works as well. And so, uh, yeah, I have to get going on some of these fat tire uh, reviews. We have a couple more coming before we get to the fat tire bikes, but they will for sure be coming out in August. Um, so, yeah, brake light works. Okay, I'll give everyone uh, 30 more seconds here. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap it up and hope everyone had a nice weekend and really appreciate everyone uh, joining me. I have some fine tuning here on the handlebars. I know I have to straighten the handlebars out at least a little bit when I turn that stem. So I'll, I'll be doing that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this review. I'm curious to see how it compares to the original Magicycle. Thanks, Vu, for joining. I believe you've joined several times at least, so I appreciate you coming back. 
Uh, when I say comfort, I don't mean the handlebars are adjusting to see. I mean the whole sturdiness of the bike and the comfort level, the wheels and the frame will give you a comfortable ride. Yeah. So uh, generally, those two bikes are going to feel very similar as far as that kind of comfort goes. You have 26 by 4 inch wide tires. You can uh, lessen the, the pressure on them for sure and get a more comfortable ride. And of course, a suspension seat post is going to help with the ride as well. So yeah, noted uh, on, you know, sturdiness of the bike is going to be pretty similar, I think. Uh, how long until you do a ride review on this? Probably, I'm going to take a guess and say probably three weeks. So we have the Rattan review coming up in the next few days. We have a Bike Tricks bike. I'm not sure if that one will come out before the Okai bike that we unboxed the other day. And then we'll move on to the Okai bike after that. So the Okai bike that I have to start filming and then this bike and then the Hemiway. So August ish um, will be when this coming out, probably in the second half of August would be my guess, unless a huge like brand reaches out to me and is like, this bike is launching in two weeks and uh, we want a video live as soon as it uh, uh, releases. So try before August 15th. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Really appreciate everyone's support. And uh, yeah, really uh, thank you for uh, using our affiliate links and checking out our resources and helping us out. Certainly uh, been lots of fun. And uh, yeah, we had a decent uh, crew on tonight. So everyone have a good night. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the next one.